Hello all. For those who are new here, welcome. My name is Franklin Habit, and my vlog is all about creating the world I want to live in, one project at a time. First, a note about the last episode of this vlog. I asked you in that one to tell me what you're working on, and boy did you ever. I had so much fun reading your comments. So much that I think asking a question is going to become a part of each episode. In fact, I've already picked one out for this time. Um, you'll hear that near the end. I might even in the future start featuring a favorite comment each time. Who knows? Uh, but in any case, my hearty thanks to everyone who took the time to comment, because you really made me smile. Uh, now then, what's on my needles? Well, the knitting fairy has smiled upon me. Because a small project I picked up on the spur of the moment has turned out to be the key to restarting a stalled project which has been sulking in a corner. Here's what happened. My old iPad mini suddenly bit the dust, so I scraped together what was needed for a new one. The sales guy at the Apple store was really cute when he asked me uh, did I want to buy a case for it, and I said, no thank you, I'm going to knit one. And he said, oh, okay, wait, what? And that's what's on my needles right now. I am working up a simple, off-the-cuff cozy for the iPad mini. Two knit panels, which will have a woven lining sewn inside them, because, of course, you don't want lint in your electronics. Um, here's the front panel, which I have finished knitting. I picked out this simple cable for the motif because it's pretty, and also because I just haven't knit cables for a while, and I had a sudden urge hit while I was winding the yarn. The yarn, by the way, is another really luscious worsted weight from my friends at Northlight Fibers. Um, you look at the description below for a link to them. Now, here I am going up the back panel, uh, also in a texture pattern, smaller, but still enough to give the tablet a cushion for protection. The construction, if you even want to call it that, is so simple. It will be just a front and a back sewn together. That's it, aside from the lining. I'll talk more about the lining process when I get there and show you more of that. So, you know, fine, great, but I got really excited when I realized that the juicy cable on the front panel only includes cable crossings on right side rows, only on the right side of the fabric. On the wrong side, all I have to do is work the stitches as they present themselves. When I see something that looks like a knit stitch, I knit. When I see a purl bump, I purl. That's all. So that, combined with the extremely short, very predictable, memorizable repeat, means this motif is a pleasure to knit flat and circularly, which makes it the solution to a project you haven't heard me mention for a while for a reason. You may remember, if you've been watching for a while, that I planned a follow-up to this really nice knit-to-fit worsted weight saddle shoulder sweater that was generated at franco.com. But this second one was going to be fancier and would also be worked in fingering weight yarn, lovely fingering weight from Bare Naked Wools. Well, um, here's a picture of how that is going. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, because that pretty traveling twisted stitch panel that I planned to use in the saddles and then down the sleeves was just not going well at all. I had planned, of course, to knit the flat portion of the saddles without turning them. I was going to be knitting back backwards across what would otherwise be the wrong side rows. Well, I am not going to lie to you. It worked. It worked. But I hated it. I mean, I hated every measly, frowning, twisted little stitch. And of course, since you work both saddles at once, I hated all of them twice. I was making slow, slow progress. And, you know, okay, okay, so some knitting goes slowly. Uh, if my thrill were doing things at rocket speed, maybe I would not be a knitter. But I was going slowly and not enjoying myself. And I believe firmly 
that life is too short to spend it knitting things that you are hating to knit. No, no, no. So the work got torn out and I wound it up again and I've waited for a solution to come to me and now a solution has. I will be using this cable or at least some variation of it that suits the gauge of the sweater and I have high hopes for the results. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, since the sweater project was stalled and this cable is going to help it move again, is that a jumper cable? Huh? You stop making that face. You clicked on this video of your own free will. Um, so, in other happy news, I had my first uh, post-COVID meeting with a really special person. In the last vlog, I talked about just how crazy joyful it was to get together again with a whole bunch of fellow fiber artists, but sometimes one person is enough, if it's the right person. So a few days ago, I took Amtrak down to St. Louis to have a working weekend with John Malarkey, my friend and collaborator of many years. Um, John is uh, primarily a weaver, specifically a card weaver, more on that to come. Uh, of course, I am primarily a knitter. And since the day we first met teaching in adjacent classrooms at a festival, we've found that being around each other somehow helps us get our work done. And also, we help each other come up with ideas for future work. And of course, thanks to COVID, we hadn't been anything like near each other for way too long, and it was time to do something about it. Now, St. Louis was hot as hell when I arrived, over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. But John lives near one of my favorite places in the world, the Missouri Botanical Garden. In spite of the heat, I really wanted to visit. So, like the generous host that he is, he took me there on my first day, early in the day, when it was still a mere 80 degrees outside. On this visit, the big show was the Daylilies. The party in the American Hemerocallis Society Garden was in full swing. I love Daylilies, so we lingered there for a while, and I noticed that one hybrid had been named Always Afternoon. And of course, because I am a nerd with a Victorian fixation, that started me thinking of Alfred Lord Tennyson's famous poem, The Lotus Eaters. The poem, in case you don't know it, is based on the episode in Homer's Odyssey in which Odysseus and his sailors land on that island where the local vegetation, if you eat it, puts you into a dreamy stupor that makes you want to lie around and do nothing. Now me, I can lie around and do nothing all by myself without any help from a lotus, but I do like the poem, and it kept rolling around in my head until the broiling sun finally drove us out of the garden. Here's a bit of it. Courage, he said, and pointed toward the land. This mounting wave will roll us shoreward soon. In the afternoon, they came unto a land in which it seemed always afternoon. All round the coast, the languid air did swoon, breathing like one that hath a weary dream. Full-faced above the valley stood the moon, and... Like a downward smoke, the slender stream along the cliff to fall and pause and fall did seem. A land of streams, some, like a downward smoke, slow-dropping veils of thinnest lawn did go, and some, through wavering lights and shadows broke, rolling a slumberous sheet of foam below. They saw the gleaming river seaward flow from the inner land. Far off, three mountain tops, three silent pinnacles of aged snow, stood sunset flushed and dewed with showery drops up clomb the shadowy pine above the woven copse. The charmed sunset lingered low adown in the red west through mountain clefts. The dale was seen far inland, and the yellow down bordered with palm, and many a winding vale and meadow, set with slender galingale. A land where all things always seemed the same. And round about the keel, with faces pale, 
dark faces pale against that rosy flame, the mild-eyed, melancholy lotus-eaters came. So later on, in the shade on John's back porch, John and I were talking about upcoming projects, and I showed him the fabric shopping vlog. I admitted that I still wanted to make a shoulder bag, but since I'd done that video, the prospect of making the quick sew bag again wasn't terribly exciting. Now, John is also a fan of Vanessa Muncy's book, The Gentleman's Wardrobe. In fact, we bought our copies at the same time on a fabric shopping trip in St. Louis. And he asked me, well, why don't you make the bag from that book? Well, why not indeed? It's more functional, what with having more internal pockets and pouches and things. And I certainly love the look. Then he offered to save me a step in the sewing by weaving the bag strap for me. So here's what you should know about John Malarkey. His claim to fame, and his fame is considerable among weavers, is his work with card weaving, which you will also hear called tablet weaving. Same stuff, different names. You don't just sneeze at an offer from John to weave something for you. He does have conditions, though. And here are those conditions in his own words. Okay, so tell me, so what are the, the rules for this, um, for this band? Who gets to choose what? Well, you, you, you have choice over color, um, but this is not a commission piece, so I get full artistic control. Okay, so I got to choose the color. Yes. You are going to choose the rest. Yes, and that rule being that since I get full artistic control, mm -hmm. when I pass the band on to you, yes. you may use it on your bag. Yes. You may also decide to chop it up and use it as fire starter, and that's okay too. I wouldn't do that with your weaving. <laughs> What but, kind of monster do you think I am? But it is yours to do with as you wish. Well, okay. Fair enough. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Fine with me, dude. So, before he could go off the boil, I conjoled him into letting me go right choose yarns from his stash, and then he jumped into the warping and design process. If you want a really full account of how card weaving works, I strongly encourage you to have a look at John's website and his videos. I'll link those below. But I also wanted some souvenir footage of the beginning of my bag strap. So um, here it is. Uh, in card weaving, the cards themselves are the loom. I mean, that's right. That little deck of cards with holes in the corners is a loom. To hold the warp threads, which travel through those holes, John most often uses an inkle style loom, which you see here, but this is not inkle weaving, another, which is another band weaving technique you may have heard of. The only purpose here of the wooden framework is to hold the warp threads steady and in place. The deck of cards is the loom. The deck of cards is what makes the weaving happen. A thread is passed through each hole in each card, the color of that thread being selected according to the pattern you intend to weave. The threaded cards are all lined up in the proper order. Uh, this is also determined by the pattern that you want to make. And then when you turn the cards, by turning the cards, the weaver opens up a space in front of them. This space is called the shed. And the shed has certain strands of the warp above and certain strands below. A shuttle, which you see here, wrapped with the weft yarn that will tie the band together, is passed through the shed. Then the cards are turned, and this causes a new shed, with its own arrangement of colors, to open. And the shuttle is passed through the shed in the other direction. This is how the band grows. Turn the cards, pass the shuttle, press down, or beat, the weft, turn, pass, beat, turn, pass, beat. And out of this, you create a strong but flexible band that's patterned on both sides. A sewn strap would be fine, of course, but a handwoven strap, custom made just for me, that is going to be extra special. I have just realized I'm gonna owe John big time for this. I wonder what he'll demand. Yeah, so that leads me to 
the question for this episode because spending time with John really made me think about how over the years he has turned out to be the perfect buddy for adventures in fiber and textiles. He encourages and improves my work and I do the same for him. So here's my question. Have you got a friend, buddy, collaborator like that? Someone who eggs you on and you do the same for them and as a result, you both have more fun and do better work and quite possibly also spend more on your yarn and fabric stashes than you intended to. I'd like you to tell me in the comments. Pay them a little tribute. I'm looking forward to reading your stories very, very much. So until next time, I'm going to get back to work on my iPad cozy so that then I can get back to work on my sweater. And I hope that whatever you are making today is bringing you great joy. See you again soon. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel so you'll be the first to know about future episodes. Click like or leave me a comment to let me know your thoughts. And if you really, really liked what you saw, check out my Patreon campaign, where my patrons enjoy exclusive access to downloads, live streams, and other bonus material every week.